This is a demonstration video of a semi-automated tungsten tip patcher for use in STM. The machine has a wire extruder and a z-axis, which allows the wire to locate the surface of the etchant and repeatedly submerge the wire at a specified distance below the liquid, which is important for tip quality and consistency. For this demonstration, I'm etching a 0.25 millimeter tungsten wire with 12 molar sodium hydroxide at 12 volts. I start by putting about 5 millimeter step of NaOH in the etching dish. Then the wire is located on the surface of the etchant and submerged about 1.5 millimeters below the surface. The wire is supplied with an etching voltage and a stainless steel ring is connected to ground. At the wire, an insulating layer of tungsten oxide is formed during the etching. This is removed by dunking the tip in 12 molar hydrochloric acid for 30 seconds, which is not shown here. Hydrogen gas forms at the stainless steel ring. It is important the gas bubbles do not come near the tip during etching, as this will cause asymmetries, resulting in inconsistent tip geometry. Because of this, the stainless steel ring is more than an inch away from the tip. The current throughout the etch starts at around 20 milliamps, then drops to about 8 milliamps at the end of the etch. Then, the bottom of the wire drops free from the top of the wire, forming the tip. The top portion of the wire is then dipped in hydrochloric acid and rinsed in deionized water before loading into the STM. Between etches, it's important to clean the dish and the electrode ring free of any debris as this will cause asymmetry during the etching. This first video is an up-close view of a standard etch. You can see hydrogen bubbles forming at the stainless steel electrode ring and debris staying clear of the tungsten. Eventually, Etching at the meniscus becomes significant enough to create an, an impingement, breaking the bottom of the tungsten from the top. Etching is stopped immediately after by measuring the increase in junction resistance between the etchant and the wire. The second macro video, I tapped the table to break the meniscus at the tip, giving a better view of the etching. However, this process produces a terrace-like etching that is also similar to what happens when bubbles or debris gets stuck on the tip during the etching. This first tip is from the first macro video of an undisturbed tip. The second tip shows terrace-like etching caused by breaking the meniscus during the etching. I image some tips with a scanning electron microscope, SEM. The first picture is a tungsten tip etched in sodium hydroxide, then rinsed in deionized water. You can see there's a black precipitate from the etching still present on the tip. The second tip that was rinsed in 12 molar HCl after etching, you can see the oxide layer appears to be gone. 
I was not able to measure the radius of the tips due to the limitations of the SEM, but they appear to be less than 50 nanometers, which I consider to be good quality. Files for the etcher, including CAD and code, can be found on my GitHub page, along with detailed procedures for tip fab and preparation. At the moment, I've been doing in situ tip preparation by scanning on gold, but the STM is still under construction and I haven't gotten good images off the system yet. In the future, I would like to simplify the design of the etcher a bit and enclose the etching dish to shield it from airborne debris and air currents. I would also like to try electrochemical nickel plating for a spin polarized STM, but this will be some time before the STM is ready to try that. At the moment, it's able to produce high quality tips reliably and very inexpensively.